Good evening. Welcome to the Out in Westchester podcast. This week, we're coming to you from the Bedford Hills Wine and Beer Bar at 27 Adams Street Depot Plaza in Bedford Hills, New York. Check them out at bhwineandbeerbar.com. Follow them on Facebook and Instagram. Both of them are Bedford Hills Wine and Beer Bar, all spelled out. My name is Frank Pellegrino. I'm joined by my incredible co-host, Liz Wadalski. Hello, everybody. We, Thank uh, you for coming back, Frank. I, I missed I you missed, last week. I missed you guys last week. I was, was just listening to the episode. It was fun. <laughs> you yes. and Asim Barnes hit Asim, it off nicely. We did. We did. You debated uh, the pronunciation of his name. It is Asim. We were right a few episodes back. Uh, I had to point out that. I thought that was funny. It was funny. Uh, I didn't know that anyone could have mess up a scene with Steven. I know. Steve. Steve. A Steve. A Steve. A Steve. They don't see the M at the end. Yeah. Yeah, And then, of course, Alex Kolar, one of my favorite young comics, Mm -hmm. up-and-coming comics, was on, too. He was fantastic. Mm -hmm. Uh, By the time this comes out, we will know if he has won the Empire State Stand-Up Showdown. He was so funny. And we have another guest uh, on it, too. Jason Scott is also in the finals. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He was on a few episodes back. Yeah. Great. Yeah, so... Oh, um, then it's hard to play favorites. I got to talk to you about it, but hopefully you can come on Thursday night. I'm coming. Good. Mm-hmm. Want to be a judge again? Sure. Oh, big stakes. No. I, I, I think I'm getting better and better at everything that I do. We're huh? not going to do feedback at that one. Oh, okay. Yeah. I just judge. Just okay, judge. Who yep. Whoever makes me laugh the hardest and the most, that's who wins. Uh, I am very excited to be here. This is our first show in Bedford Hills, I think. It is. Uh, and this place is beautiful. It's beautiful. They restore wood. They, they take old bottles and they turn them into candles and lights. This is absolutely stunning. Um, it's like a handcrafted bar in the middle, <laughs> right across the street from Bedford, Bedford Hills train station. Uh, this place should be rocking, but they're only open Wednesdays, Thursdays, Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays. I saw that, and we need mm-hmm. to get to the bottom of this. We're joined by well, they're, the owner, they, They're allowed Marcy. to have a weekend on Monday. On <laughs> they Tuesday. are, but I need to know why. We're joined by Marcy Manfreda Siciliano. Did I get that right? No, but it's okay. It's close. Can you pronounce it for me, please? It's Manfredonia Siciliano. So I didn't write all the letters down. I missed a couple letters. It's Otherwise, fine. I would have had it. It's okay. We're joined by Marcy. And uh, guitarist and guitar teacher featured in Guitar Player Magazine. 45 years you've been performing here in Westchester County. Scott Morgan. Hey. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thanks for coming on. I, tr- I think that was 25 years. 25 years? No, just kidding. Oh, man. I'm not going to screw up twice. Jesus. I'm gone a week and everything falls apart on me. Uh, we tried to get you on before, so I'm glad we're here this time. Thank you. Bedford Hills, and you live close by. You grew up and born and raised in Mount Kisco, right? Yes, I was uh, born in Mount Kisco. I now live in Carmel. I've been up there 20 plus years now. So you're Westchester through and through. And you're yeah. from the Bronx, you told me, right, yes, Marcy? I'm from the Bronx. And where do you call home now? You still there? Uh, Bedford Hills. Bedford Hills. How long we're have you been up here? We're about 13 years now. So you're Westchester now. Yeah, now I'm Westchester. But you can't take the Bronx out. Uh, yes, you can. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I did. No, um, it's hard, but um, being up here, it was a change of life. I love it. I what really part do. of the Bronx are you from? From Throg's Neck section. Oh, LA. yeah. Mm-hmm. Throg's Neck Country so Club. It's there beautiful there. My whole life. And then one day I decided to move up here with my four boys. And I thought I was in Kansas. And now I, <laughs> I love it. It's great. So when did you open Bedford Hills Beer and Wine Wine and Beer Bar? Um, probably about, about a year ago. Mm-hmm. So we were open temporary for a little while, and then we reopened about four months ago. And um, it's, it's just a great place for gathering the community, have a quick bite. And um, we incorporated it with the, uh, the candles and CBD Live Natural. So if you're shopping, you can come over and have lunch. Mm-hmm. Or at nighttime, you want to just come in for a drink. And then we got Scott here to play on Saturday nights, which has been a great, you know, add-on. Yeah, every Saturday, <laughs> Scott Morgan's here. You can also check out Scott uh, on August 28th at uh, another great place, Stonefire Mount Kisco. And then he'll be at the Peekskill Riverfront Festival on September 21st. What, 2 p.m., 3 p.m.? Uh, I think uh, it's, it's going to be somewhere between 2 and 4. We haven't uh, locked down the time exactly. That's yeah, great. But I'll be on the main stage. And that was cool. That was another gig that I was at. And uh, there was a DJ there after I finished. And he filmed me playing. And I contacted him. And he's like, listen, I have an opportunity for you. I want you to play at the Peak Skill Festival. I'm on the board. And I'd love to have you on the main stage. So that was uh, pretty awesome. That's great. That's so fantastic. now this just all clicked with uh, Marcy and you, Scott. Just... Every Saturday, you were looking for a guitar player, 
mm-hmm. then it just worked out perfectly, right? Yeah. My girlfriend um, and I, um, very close, we started talking, and um, I said, you know what, I need to get a, you know, somebody to play a band. And she says, you know what, I know somebody, he's a plumber. And I started laughing. I said, well, we have a, a guitar plumber. So then one day, Scott came by, and I heard him play, and I said, he's perfect for here. He really is, and he's really good. Is he also your plumber now? No. <laughs> no? No. No. So if there's a flood going on in the no, back I, or something, I, you don't like, Scott, can you take five for a second? My original business, what we do for a living, um, besides having fun, is we own a construction company. So I have a whole full team of um, electricians, plumbers, painters, okay. so... Yeah, I, I keep a plunger in the car. Just you do, just in right? Case, right? <laughs> you always imagine that. Like you always think yeah. a plumber has a plunger just hiding in the trunk somewhere, just in case they're at a friend's house or something. Mm-hmm. Like, oh no, it's backed up, and you just it's like, guys, I got this. Let me take exactly. care of this. Exactly. Does that ever happen to you? Uh, like you're at a friend's house or something, and all of a sudden you didn't you just invite you over for a drink, and the the sink is backed up. Uh, yeah, it actually has happened. Do you ever question why they actually invited you over to begin with? No, but that's a good point. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, it has happened, actually, yeah. Wow. Well, is it one of those At, at least I know how to use it quickly and shut the valve off so it doesn't overflow. He that's the best part. He started by playing a plunger. <laughs> he moved up to guitar. No. Exactly. 45 a, years on guitar, 50 on the plunger. He's mm-hmm. an incredible guitar player. I can't wait to see him. Yes, it yeah. really is. Every Saturday. What time does it start on Saturday? 7 o'clock. Is there a cover or you just come on in? Just come on in. That's nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And at the end of it, we made a kick. We made a um, a twist at the end of it. Mm-hmm. We started doing karaoke, dancing. It is a blast, really. So Scott goes on at seven. What time does karaoke start? Around ten, and then my singing bartender over there starts getting the mic and starts singing. Singing it is bartender. Hyster- it's hysterical. Yes. What's your go-to song in karaoke? What song? Nice. And you sing every Saturday? No, no, no. I don't know. We have a lot of the firemen come here, too. Yeah. Oh, cool. Bedford Hills Fire Department, they're here all the time. Yeah. It's actually really cool because it's like, you get to, it starts out with like some mellow Spanish guitar, jazzy stuff. And then I always have special guests. So you're not just watching me the whole time. I have singers get up and different people perform. And then at the end, we do like kind of a dance party. I put on dance tracks, people dance. And, and then we have this karaoke sing along with a wireless mic. So we go out to the entire bar, hand mm. the mic off, and people seem to like really love that part of the show. Show. It's really popular. That so it goes like from you playing acoustic at seven. When when would you say it turns over to karaoke? About ten. Right. Yeah, and you stay and you run the, the entire night. Yeah, yeah. Wow. I do. I do. I do a acoustic set. Then I do an electric set where I'm doing like Santana and Hendrix, Stevie Ray Vaughan, all kinds of cool, more you know, amplified stuff. And then uh, then we turn it over to dancing and karaoke. It's really cool. It's really, really fun. Because I don't think there's anything like that going on in Bedford Hills for the most part, right? Is there other music in Bedford Hills? I don't think so. Not that I know of at all. Yeah. So this is, and it's fabulous because you're right by the train station. So yeah. you could hop on the train from White Plains and hop up here. That's true. And the and other you... great thing that they do here on Wednesdays, you do a game night, right? Mm-hmm. You have, like, I don't know, 12 different games that people yep. can play. We have a lot of different games you, you can play. And you have drink specials. Mm-hmm. Yep. Now, it's primarily um, beer and wine only, mm-hmm. right? Yep. You don't have hard liquor at no, all no. here. Okay, and then you do, like, tapas. It's sort of like um, flatbreads and light bites. Yep, so pizza, meatballs. We have hummus trio. Mm-hmm. We have um, panini press sandwiches. You know, small bites, but that's, it's just like perfect. It just fits, you know, nothing large. You, you come have here. such a large variety of wines, though. I was looking at yes. your menu. We I tried. Mean, 90? How many wines do you think you, you keep Probably in about, stock? About 80, 90, right? About that, because I was looking mm-hmm. at your menu like, wow, what a great selection. Thank you. From Prosecco's to, you know, all these different whites that you only yes. get in Italy or California. Yes. <clears throat> so that's nice. Thank it's a very you. high class selection of uh, of selection of wine. Thank you. Um, and then now you're starting something new coming up in September. You're doing every first Wednesday, you're doing a, it's a 50% off badge night. So anyone who's a service member, like yep. police mm-hmm. officer, ambulance, yep. um, if you show your badge, you get 50% off your drinks all night long, hmm. every first Wednesday of the month. And that's starting in September, September wow. 4th. So police, October. fire, EMT, I assume, mm-hmm. too? Yes. Anybody that has a badge. 
Any kind of badge. I guess. What about Con Edison workers? <laughs> Are they 50% off? Um, if they cut down their bill, we will give them a half off. Good answer. <laughs> so that's kind of fun. Yeah. Good. We try to have uh, every... Uh, the reason why we're closed on Tuesday nights mm -hmm. is because we, uh, when we really started the, uh, the bar, it was to be educational. We were doing talks. I was doing makeup classes, I was doing lotion parties, I was teaching people about CBD. Um, so those are educational nights, was Tuesday night. And the only reason we're closed now on Monday is until football starts, we're open again back on Monday. So we needed that one night just to keep oh, okay. it where you can come in and we, we paint the bottles. The girls will come in for a painting party, we paint bottles, we, uh -huh. um, you know, do our own lotion. We show them how to do essential oils. So we teach them. So it was really just for classes. Um, and I needed to make sure we were shut down at that time because we get so busy with the bar. If we had a party, people would be coming in and it wasn't working out that way. So Tuesday nights is always for either special events, talks, or classes. Okay, so you're not shut down, shut down on no. Tuesdays. Oh, okay, because that was one thing I was confused about online. Mm -hmm. I saw the thing. I'm like, wait a sec, we're showing up. And they're closed tonight. And then, of course, this is for that. Well, they have really a cool. store that's attached, which is next door, which they have a full line of CBD oils and a whole selection of candles. So can you talk a little bit about that? Sure. Because yeah, you've been please. featured in Westchester Magazine now mm -hmm. and also now in 914 Inc. Magazine. Mm -hmm. Yes. And yes. it's really popular. And you Thank actually you. have your own line. Yes. So how did you get into that? So about four years ago, I started, um, we have a construction company for Street Nationwide Maintenance. Mm -hmm. And my son started messing around with bottles because he liked to save like really high-end bottles. Mm -hmm. And he started cutting them. I said, oh my God, it's really cool. Yeah. But um, my, uncle is like, my uncle is Danny Aiello the actor, and I, I wanted to do something and give back, so I said, well, I'd like to be able to do an event, like an American Cancer Society event, and have a big event, a party. So my uncle was singing, and I said, I needed something for the tables. So I said to myself, where are those bottles you were cutting? I said, we really should do something with that. But I said, you know what, because we have asthma, let's just use soy wax and make them. So we set all the tables up, and we had this big gala at the surf club. And Whole Foods is one of my clients, uh, the UN Plaza, so we had a lot of big wigs there and they loved the candles and they said oh my god these candles smell great you really need to get in the stores you need to do this and I said you know what this is a great thing because I'm doing this because I'm allergic to everything mm -hmm. and so are my sons so we started making candles and then we opened up the store Custom Candle Co um, and as we were open for like a year um, I was sick with fibromyalgia I had it for a while and it started getting worse so the depression came in aches, pains, anxiety so my son came back from California and said mom listen you need to really do something for yourself. You need to try this. I said, no, I don't want to be high. You know, mm -hmm. first of all, I'm an Italian old school. I, I get, you know, I, I have to make sure I read everything. So I said, you know what, hell with it, I'm gonna try it. So I tried it and I noticed that I started feeling a little bit better. And then I did my research and I started, you know, taking CBD and it just changed my life. I said, oh my God, this is amazing. So then I started ordering CBD, making candles, lotions with it. And I went to my doctor in Mount Kisco and he said, you know what, you need your prescriptions? I said, you know what, honestly, I really don't. He says, come on, what the hell are you taking? For you to be able to do this, you know, there's something to this. I said, and I told him the story. He started recommending people to me. So I would just started giving people out stuff for free and said, you know what, take it. If it helps you, let me know. And people were saying, you know what, I need to order it. So we started bringing the line in and started selling it. And I seen such a great response. We started doing CBD Live Natural. We have our own line. Uh, we're in three stores. Westchester Mall, um, Sanford Town Center, and here. Mm -hmm. And after January, we are actually going to franchise CBD Live Natural. Wow. Because it's more educational. It's more for not like a smoke shop. You want to come in, make sure you got the right quality, make sure you know it's tested, no metals. So we get a lot of people coming in for that. And also, we incorporate the talks here. So once a month, we have a talk in the bar, and we educate people that are not educated about CBD. And there's more information is on cbdnaturalliving.com or CB, CBD CBD Live Natural. Living, na, live natural yep. com, and on the I'm website, sorry. all okay. questions, answers are on there, and um, and that's the whole concept was to get that you know family atmosphere. People could have a drink, talk about product, come in, hang out, and we we have the whole community really supports us. It's really great. Yeah, it really is the wave of the future. For those that don't know, maybe me. What is the association with uh, CBD oils and cannabis or marijuana? So with the marijuana plant, right. what they do is when you, you um, extract for CBD, you extract the same marijuana plant, but they now grow it just CBD. So when you extract it, you're getting the full 
uh, cannabinoids in there, but you're not getting the THC, that which makes you high. So you, they extract it that way, so that part you won't get high. So when you extract, they do it less than 3%. THC, you can you can extract just for CBD, but you want to extract it with the whole plant because it's so many other cannabinoids in there that it's helping people. What's a cannabinoid? Those are all the different components that are in there. Like you have THC, CB1, CB2, CBD. There's all those cannabinoids okay. in there. So when you extract it, you want the whole plant. You don't want just THC or you don't want just CBD. Some hmm. people like the isolate, just CBD. But my response and the people that we, you know, sell to in the community likes the full spectrum. It's called full spectrum. I'm losing my voice. Full spectrum. So that gives you the whole benefit of the plant. And to my understanding, CBD oil is usually used very often now for cancer treatment. Yes. And they're finding now, so, so in a year or two, you'll find so much more information. Now, I'm doing this two and a half years. Mm -hmm. So it's like now it's getting crazy. It's in the gas station. But you want to make sure... You're sourcing it right, but you'll find next year it's doing so much, and that's why they're legalizing it, because right now they do the research, and it's slowing down cancer cells. So while you're taking it, just say if you take it for maintenance, you take it once a day, whatever, it's actually killing cancer cells, and that's what they're finding, it, and it's going to be amazing. In a couple of years, they're going to be using it Incredible. for everything. Um, and like the fibromyalgia, the central nervous system, my joints, my back, I tell everybody I feel like I'm 25. I'm 58 years old, and I do not stop from the morning I wake up till the end of the night. And before this, before I started, I would be in bed three to four months out of the year be, without being able to move. My back gave way. My knees gave way. I mean, it's just so much with fibromyalgia that, you know, it's depressing. And then you get into this really bad depression. I mean, I have people come in, and they have anxiety. And you, you can look at them like they're looking for something and, and they're on so much medicine. And when they come in, if I could just, you know, stay here all day long and just talk to people, I will. And because I want them to get off what they're on. I know, like, what it's like to be on antidepressants, Pamela, anxiety pills, you know, buzz bar, everything. Right? And I, I have an ulcer, um, esophagus reflux, all from anti-inflammatory pills. So while you're taking it, it's ripping your stomach apart. Just taking CBD oil, it just heals all of that. But you have to be consistent, and it has to build up. Hmm. So, you know, um, and that's what the bar was really actually for, was for my talks, to educate, because that's the most important thing is education. You know, you wouldn't want to invest $100 not knowing what you're getting right. and, and how right. it's going to benefit you. Right. This is similar to my mother. My mother's about your age, uh, fibromyalgia, and CBD oil now. Yeah, that's and, it. Uh, she used to always be in bed, always on painkillers, always on all these different medications, and it's it's night and day. Yeah. She's up and about way more often than she ever was before. Uh, I never spoke to her about CBD oil. I just oh, it's a thing she's taking. I know it has something to do with cannabis or marijuana. I, you know, I was never informed and really. Mm -hmm seek knowledge on it. So this is really, really interesting to me. Yeah. And, and it's really great of, that you're doing this. Thank you. And a lot of people that do come in, they, they're so like, they don't know. We're like, oh my God, is that what it does? And once you, you get them to come in, like here the community is a really good community, really tight. So once like, look at the lady down the block coming in and she's taking it, now all her friends are going to take it. Mm -hmm. like, but they just want to come to a, a place where they trust you. You know, and they source it, and we, they know that we're doing the right thing and doing our homework. And then they come in all the time. You That's know, and, and it's really good. And we always try, like, when they come in, we always give them some samples, new things to try. Because without trying it, I wouldn't buy a bottle for $100 or 200 if I didn't know if I liked it. Yeah, I was going to ask if you had yeah. samples. Yeah. yeah. And Is there any kind of immediate impact? Like, do you, like... Like, let's say I took CBD oil today for the first time. Would I actually notice any kind of difference physically or emotionally? Sometimes you will not. Sometimes it takes a week, two, three weeks. So I do this. I tell everybody that walks in, and Angela will tell you, one month. I personally will give you money back. If you can tell me in one month you don't feel no difference, either you're not on the right dosage or it's not for you. Not one person that came in, I gave their money back yet. Because I want you to be consistent. You have to say, you know, I'm giving it to 30 days. At Right away, you'll notice your sleeping is different. So if you take it right before you go to bed at nighttime, and I used to take pills to go to bed, I don't take, I used to take volumes, because when you get older, you get a little bit of anxiety. All I do is take my oil, start reading my phone, and I'm out cold. But I get, I only sleep five hours. 
But I, that five hours were like 10 hours sleep. I wake up, not tired. I get right up and get up in the morning. And the sleep is such a good quality sleep. You'll notice that right off the bat. But depending on what your body needs, like if you come to me and you're, you're full of um, arthritis, it might take you a couple of weeks to build up. Yeah. So everybody's different. Um, you might start off with 250 and say, you know what, I really don't feel it. Go up to 500 milligrams or take double dose. Because you, once you ask your doctor, it really doesn't interfere with anything. You know, like I take my vitamin D, I take my uh, probiotics. It doesn't mix with anything. But I always say, ask your doctor first. Then you come in because I'm not a doctor. I can tell you what it does for me. Mm -hmm. And then when we have the talks, so many people come in and they'll say, you know what? It helped my mom. It helped this. It helped my knee. My girlfriend, she was going in for surgery. She does not have to have surgery. Dr. Bernard from Mount Kisco Medical Group, the man is like one of the top surgeons, and he sends everyone to us. Now, what do you say to those who tell you that CBD is a gateway oil? <laughs> <laughs> Guys, again, we're coming to you from the Bedford Hills Wine and Beer Bar, 27 Depot Plaza, Bedford Hills, New York. We're joined by Marcy, owner here of Bedford Hills Wine and Beer Bar, also the owner of... Custom Candle Co. and CBD Live Natural, Nationwide Maintenance, and Crafted by Nick. Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah. That's Nick's all our business. It's also uh, guitarist, Westchester bass, Scott Morgan, mm -hmm. who's actually been a guitar teacher for just as long as he's been playing, right? Um, yeah, uh, well, I just kind of got back into teaching. I used to teach years ago. I took a break, and I've done quite a few CDs. I've done about seven CDs, including World Beat. I've done uh, um, aerobic CDs, uh, and I did a guitar demo CD for guitar player. And then I hmm. just recently, in the ba past couple of years, got back into teaching regularly. Now, do you? what age range do you teach guitar? Uh, well, I've had some students as young as five and all the way up to their late 60s. So pretty much kind of like the whole spectrum. Do you ever get a student that is just lost? Like, do you ever feel like this? Do you ever tell them, like, look, maybe guitar isn't for you? Or have you always found a way to get around and come up with some methods and... and ideas to get them going well basically that would be with the young kids in fact yeah. i had someone young come in the other day he was only four mm -hmm. and you know have a love for music like to listen to it sing along but they just don't have the attention span to be able to learn you know an instrument because guitar is hard because piano like you could look down and see the keys guitar you can't really see the neck of the guitar mm -hmm. so it's difficult so i have had a couple of like young kids that i've had to say we maybe we should wait another year or so before and come back. That's a nice way to put it. Yeah. Wait a year. Yeah. Yeah. Because I, I can't imagine, like, it must be such a frustrating point because, especially probably younger musicians who, who maybe they're getting $40 an hour to teach a kid music. It's like, okay, do I really want to tell this kid not to do this for a year or should I keep on getting the $40 an hour? And I guess that must be like a difficult pull for some people. Yeah, well, I like to be honest. I no, mean, I, yeah. I, it's admirable, actually. Yeah. I mean, I could do good. that, just find a way around it, but you know, I don't want to waste anybody's time or money, and I'm just honest, like telling the um, parents in a nice way that you know, keep them interested in music, but like, you know, let's wait till they are able to uh, you know, concentrate more and be able to actually learn and memorize. A lot of it, you know, it's the memorization and just you know, a very small hand on a guitar is hard so even one of my students he's young and he's small i switched him to ukulele because mm -hmm. it's much smaller wow. and you're still learning it still has string names and still very similar but much easier to play for a four or five year old did that make a difference a hundred percent yeah wow big difference yeah so when you teach ukulele is it pretty much the same like do you play ukulele regularly uh, I don't play regularly, but I do play it. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's tuned differently, and the chords are different. But it's it's you know it's similar in many ways, and it's cool because it's a very portable instrument. You can just take it with you wherever you want to go. You don't need a big case, and you know take up a lot of room in the car. You can just grab it and go anywhere. So ukulele seems like such a trendy instrument right now. I see so many people in comedy who go up on stage with a ukulele while they tell jokes. Is this a, a new trend, or am I just witnessing it now and noticing it more that I'm involved in entertainment? No, I think it's a new trend, because I think uh, a couple years ago or something, it was either America's Got Talent, or I think that it was a young person that won 
that play, I would think it was a young girl that sang and played ukulele. So mm. I think it's funny. It's like the younger generation, especially the young kind of like teenage girls, they yeah. love it. I mean, really? that, yeah, that seems to be popular with, you know, girls that are anywhere from 10 to like 14. So, yeah. But there are smaller guitars for, for kids. I know my brother bought guitars, small guitars for kids. Yeah, you know, yeah, there is the, there is the four, small. But four is probably too young. Yeah, yeah. I so would say six I'll, and up would be. Yeah, there are this, the smaller body guitars, right. which I have a, a couple of students that have those also. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of it's to do the, the size of their hands. So mm-hmm. ukuleles for like little kids, you know, three, four, five. And then by the time they're six or seven, yeah. they can graduate to a mid-sized guitar and then full-size guitar. Violin too. I yeah. know those are really popular with kids. You know, and then I have the other extreme. Like I have, you know, one student, I, I think he's like, 10 or something and he's like a prodigy like Hmm. he just like I can show him something once and he can do it immediately I mean he's just amazing and that's like really encouraging when I have somebody like that so since you see an uptrend in ukulele are there any instruments that you're noticing aren't being taught as much to children any instruments that are just losing favor um not necessarily I mean you know with the music programs in schools they all play like other instruments they might come in and be playing guitar with me but in in band they're playing clarinet or cello or something yeah. like that so a lot of them uh, you know play m- multiple instruments you know and they all love drums too kids oh. love to bang on drums what other instruments have you so you teach guitar you teach bass guitar also i teach uh ukulele guitar bass and believe it or not i teach west african drumming what <laughs> what's West African drumming? I'm I'm sure if I saw it I would I would know. Um well it's a it's it's different than like playing congas or bongos which is more Latin style music which I also teach and play too but my specialty is West African. It's a specific style of uh drumming that comes from Africa. Very great rhythms, polyrhythmic stuff. And there used to be a place in Mount Kisco called the Northern Westchester Center for the Arts. It, and it's closed, but I used to teach there for 10 years. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's African drumming. It's, it's a l- little bit different. It's a different kind of drum. It's called the djembe. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's super fun, too. So I teach that also. Wow. Have you ever, tr- Marcy, have you ever played uh, guitar? Has he ever given you any lessons? No, but CBD have- in exchange for uh, <laughs> An hour guitar lesson? No, but when I asked him, to, I wanted to hear drums, mm-hmm. and he had these gentlemen come and they did the drums. It was amazing, amazing. It was West African yep. drum night mm-hmm. that night. Yeah, yeah, we brought, I, I'm part of a, I, I know like all of the drum circle people around because we're kind of a small knit community. So mm-hmm. I have friends, it's called the Danbury Drum Circle, and they play every Sunday at a community center in Danbury. So when Marcy and her husband Nick said, you know, let's do something different this week. I said, hmm, let let me call my friends at the Danbury Drum Circle. We'll come here and do like a drumming night. So I did play a little guitar that night, but it was primarily like, drumming and people were just loving it we 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 drummed and we made it rain <laughs> <laughs> downpour you really. had the whole audience drumming with you right? yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah we had we had everybody I, what we did is we had bag of uh, percussion instruments like shakers right. and cowbells and tambourines tambourines and we handed it out to mm-hmm. whoever wanted to join in on the rhythms and we may at some point do like an instructional night where uh, i'll come here with more drums and instruments and actually teach people some rhythms. That's really cool. That's yeah. cool. They and of course, you could check out Scott Morgan every Saturday night here at the Bedford Hills Wine and Beer Bar. We're going to take a quick break. We're going to try out some of the food. When we return, we'll talk about what we think about the food. We'll talk about what else is happening out in Westchester County. So thanks for sticking around. And that was fun. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. That's my son, Anthony. We are back at the Bedford Hills Wine and Beer Bar, 27 Depot Square in Bedford Hills, New York. Also attached to this incredible Custom Candle Co. CBD oils and candles and all sorts of goodies that are going to make your pain and any kind of ailments go away magically, which (laughs) we're going to learn more. We have to do some research and come to one of these classes and learn more about it. Sure. That's just what's going to have to happen. Definitely. Once a month, we try to have a lot of them. We, We invite a few doctors in. Um, we invite uh, chiropractors, so everybody comes in with their own little flavor on it, and mm. they talk about it. 
Uh, we're also joined by Scott Morgan. 45 years in music, all in Westchester County. You have something really cool going on on YouTube. It's Scott Morgan Elegant Guitar. Tell us a little bit about that. Uh, yeah, that was, if you go to YouTube and you type in the search bar, Scott Morgan Elegant Guitar Music, and also Scott Morgan Blues Guitar, you can mm -hmm. see some clips of me. But you have to put uh, that whole thing in because there's another Scott Morgan who's, a, who's like a, I know, I want to we'll like, you know. kill him. That's not a bad idea. Yeah, we'll find <laughs> anyway, yeah, so he's like another, some rock musician. So if you put Scott Morgan Elegant Guitar Music and Scott Morgan Blues Guitar, you can see some clips of me playing and um, a little bit of what I do here, which is pretty cool and uh, I'm uh, pretty excited about it. That's really cool. Every Thank Saturday you're here, uh, it's a guitar, and then you got the dance party and karaoke, and you do it, all of it from your phone, you just told me off, off camera. That's incredible, dude. Yeah, well, you know, um, like I was uh, telling Liz, uh, I was going to go back into playing in bands again. I hadn't done it in years. And I said, you know what? Bands is a lot of hassle. And I said, maybe I'll just go out as a solo act. And, you know, I could have went in the studio. I've done like seven CDs, like I was telling before, and made backing tracks. But uh, now on YouTube, you can get really good backing tracks. And, but you have to search through them. So yeah. I, I decided to pull up some great backing tracks for like Santana and ZZ Top and Blues and everything. So I hand selected the ones that I want. And then I bought this really big Bluetooth speaker. It's a big, it's like I've got a 15 inch speaker in it. It's a huge speaker, 2000 watt powered speaker. So basically I pull up my phone, I put that track on and I play along with it. And it sounds like a whole band. Wow. Mm -hmm. There's a couple artists that do that. That's really cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah those backing tracks on YouTube and on the, on the, also the royalty-free ones you can find on YouTube or on iTunes, those are really helpful you know, for, for doing little projects and stuff yeah. like that. I mean, they're really challenging because uh, you, know, you don't have a band to give you cues and everything, so you've got to really uh, practice hard to uh, you know, sync up with them. But uh, it's, been, uh, it's been awesome. I really like it. Scott, I know you have to run. What were your thoughts on the food? What did you get to try here? Because we just had four or five different items off the menu. Uh, really good. I love the pizza. The pizza is amazing. Mm -hmm. And uh, that homemade hummus is really good. I mean, everything, yeah. everything here is good. It's all really high quality. And um, I kind of like everything. I'm a little bit of a foodie. so uh, I like, I like the it menu. All. It's simple. Yeah. It's nothing crazy. It's a smaller place, small pizzas and tapas. I really, really appreciate that. You're not trying to go, go nuts with nope, these things. Not at all. It's mm -hmm. simple. It's That's you it. come in, you get what you want to get. Everything is delicious. Mm -hmm. How many beers and wines do you have on the menu? There's a lot of beer and wine up there. I think we, we have more wine. We have a lot of different choices of wine, a lot of whites, reds, cabernets, um, probably about 50 to 70 different kinds. And you sell by the bottle also? We sell mm -hmm. by the bottle also. That's great. And almost That's everything's great. by the glass as well, yeah. which I find amazing yeah. on your menu. That is Everything amazing. I didn't even realize that. Everything is by that. the glass. Wow. And the beer selection is great as well. And then they do brunch every Saturday, Sunday. What do you do for brunch? For now. Well, we have the same thing. We have sandwiches. Uh, the French fall, toast. We'll French bagels, toast. Uh, bagels. In the fall, we're going to have soup. 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 Uh -huh. <laughs> uh -huh. soup, soup. Soup. Okay. We're going to have soup in the fall. And uh, yeah, just keep it simple and small. That's it. Right. Nice. It's easy. Yeah. 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 Scott, before you go. Yes, sir. Number one, if you're going to play one song for, uh, for a crowd of people, what's your go-to song? <laughs> hmm. You only have one shot. It's going to be Santana. I think it's probably going to be Black Magic Woman. Oh, nice. Yeah. I'm, that's kind of my specialty, uh, yeah. that Oya Como Va, Europa, I do that. And um, I don't know, though, but I've been, lately I've been doing this slow blues called Tin Pan Alley by Stevie Ray Vaughan, and I really get to, like, cut loose on that guitar, on that song. So probably, I think, even though I love the Santana, I would probably do this slow blues because that's the one where I get to really rip. What's the first song you're able to play from beginning to end? That I ever learned? Or that you play? ever learned the whole thing through. Okay, well, that's cool that you asked that because I just played it last Saturday. Nice. Uh, it's the first song that I uh, learned, and, of course, it's Jimi Hendrix, Purple Haze. Nice. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Wow. I mean, uh, it's well. I think the very first is the one everybody learns is "Smoke on the Water," which is simple. But uh, the one I learned all the way through is is "Purple Haze." And uh, growing up, um, 
he was my hero, and I still think that he's the greatest electric guitarist of all time. Are there any songs, or is there a song that's given you a hard time mastering at this point? Is there any that you still go back to, like, fuck, I still can't get that chord? Uh, well, the, uh, my friend Drew Keiko, we actually, uh, a couple of years ago, auditioned for America's Got Talent, and mm-hmm. we did this song called Mediterranean Sundance by a guitar player named Al Dimiola. Mm-hmm. It's like a flamenco guitar piece, and that one is hard because it's really fast licks and uh, very, very challenging. So that's a song that you know I have to like practice and stay up on to play because it's so technically challenging it's not something that you can learn and not play for a long time and pick it up and play it perfectly it's a super challenging song but super fun to play and it was amazing to audition for america's got talent when did you do that that was um a couple years a couple years ago in october yeah we went down to jacob javits center and auditioned and uh, it was super cool so you went to the first first stage right you auditioned for basically the producers uh, yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't the judges that you right. see on TV. It right. was like a preliminary judges in a room with a, a like with 30, 30, thirty other people. Thousand people. Or something. <laughs> yeah, I think there was three thousand there yeah. that day at Jacob Javits. Right. Were yeah. you scouted beforehand, or you went cold? Uh, no, we su- we submitted a video. We made a video at my friend's house, and we sent it in, and they called us to, to nice. come in. Yeah. Cool. And they give you a number, and then you got to go through the whole oh, process. Yeah, there's, yeah like yeah. five, you're di- there, you're there five different day, right? holding it. Yeah, all yeah. day. You're like, yeah. now you're moving to here, then yeah. you're moving to here. I'm like, oh my gosh, when are we going to go By in? By the time you get up there, you're exhausted, right? Exactly. You're but like, I don't even want to come here anymore. Yeah. There's two be. lines. Mm-hmm. There's two lines. There's the one that I assume you did, since you got called in. Yeah. Then there's the one that people just go and stand on a line for five hours. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. You got the pass to go. Yeah, 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 yeah. we went right in, yeah. Uh, Chrissy got that twice. Oh, okay. Where she just shows up, uh, it's an hour, half an hour, an hour. Mm-hmm. But some of these people, I, hours and hours are with them. Oh yeah, <laughs> oh yeah. Crazy. Show up at like six a.m. and you're there yeah. all day. Yeah. yeah, it's wild. Yeah, it's funny. I mean, like you know, because they want like different things, and you know, we didn't get on the show, and then the guy that was in the hallway with us, who was like a juggler, who wasn't even that good. I'm watching the show, and I'm like, oh my gosh, there he is. <laughs> the guy juggling got on, and we didn't, and and honestly, it was amazing, because people that saw us practicing mm-hmm. were like, you guys are going to win the show. I mean, they were just like blown away by our performance, but um, we didn't we didn't get called to go on the show. It was a it's little a surprise. It's a variety show, though. They need different acts. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of people that are musicians that try out for that. So, yeah. so in other words, I'm going for juggling next year. There you go. <laughs> Maybe just, I'll juggle guitars. Yeah. That's a great idea. <laughs> That's and a good play idea. while it comes back down there and you lands. Go. Yeah. Not a bad idea. But anyway, thank you for the interview. I, I hate to run it short, but uh, yeah, I'm teaching and my student is uh, patiently waiting for is me. He's a good student? He's a new student, young new kid. Student. Yeah, yeah, young kid. All right. And uh, so I appreciate thank your you time. Thank you so much for coming on. It's thank you. Having you. And, um, Hopefully, uh, we'll, I'll see you guys at one of my gigs. Yeah, yeah Peekskill, sure. right? right? You're in Peekskill on September 21st. September oh. 21st, at, yes, at the um, River Waterfront Festival. Exactly. Then and August then 28th. And then Stonefire on August 28th. August 28th. And, and then, then here every Saturday night. And here every Saturday night. Mm-hmm. And cool. uh, it's been great. Uh, Nick and, and Marcy are incredible people and been super generous to have me play uh, so many Saturdays and to continue and I feel blessed to be here and um, also uh, just a little note that I give all my tips to St. Jude's Hospital and everybody's oh been God. generous and uh, That's incredible. I, I was just telling them the other day everybody that comes I was thanking them and I just sent them a check for almost $500 wow, and, that's uh, fantastic. and so that's been a blessing to me that's like oh my, my favorite part that I'm able to give give something back and it's really uh, great. Uh, it's awesome well, he's going to be starting something new so he's starting tomorrow night so we actually are going to be doing trivia um, starting tomorrow night. Um, yeah. What is it? We're going to do trivia, and we're going to do. Um, it's kind of like name that yeah, tune. Name that you're going tune. to put, you know, put on some different uh, music, and uh, whoever you know, you're going to be able to write down what what it is. I'll play like maybe ten seconds of a song, and then whoever wins like wins. Like Thursday a, night, so it's like it's like a yeah. trivia, musical yeah. trivia. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And then whoever wins wins a nice prize. And that's mm-hmm. on Thursdays, right? No, that's tomorrow, tomorrow Wednesday. Night. Wednesday night. Oh, Wednesday, Wednesday night. Yeah. Okay. So, that's so Wednesday cool. is the real night here that you have a lot of activities. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Wow. All right. So hopefully that'd be really fun tomorrow night. Okay. Cool. That's cool. All right. Well, Scott, thank, thank you. you so much, thank dude. Thank you so much for having me. We'll see you me. definitely thank on a Saturday you. here. Okay. Thank, thank you, Marcy. Liz, Thanks, appreciate it. Thanks, soon. guys. Okay.
right. Quick, now let's, we could talk shit about him, right? <laughs> hurry up, hurry up. He's leaving. Uh, well, I'll slide again, in towards you guys. Bedford Hills Wine and Beer Bar, 27 Adams Street, Depot Plaza, Bedford Hills, New York, 10507, right opposite the train station. And um, Saturday nights, come check out Scott Morgan and Friends. Uh, every first Wednesday of each month will be badge nights. 50% all drinks for all service members, women, men, doesn't matter. Just show your badge and you get 50% off. They've got a great tapas menu. They do brunch on Saturdays and Sundays. And um, I think that really... And then game I night, have a, game I have night a confession on Wednesday, to make. too. The first time you said badge night, I don't remember which one of you, I thought you said, said badge it. night. Oh, no. I thought it was like a ladies' night. I was like, what? Wow. And then you cleared it up. I'm like, oh, that's badge night is really, really nice. I'm glad you're doing that. That's really cool. Not enough places are, are advertising, um, you know, service industry nights or anything well, like we that. We get that's a lot crazy. of the fire department when they get off mm. at nighttime, and the police department come here. And my husband's a volunteer fireman, so when they come here, most of the times we buy them all rounds of drinks. That's sweet. And you know, when they come in, or we'll give them food for free. Or so my husband said, let's do something special to give them back. Yeah. And, you know, when we figured we get everybody, Mount Kisco Fire Department. You know, it's a tight community. So it is. You're the yeah. first place to do that. I mean, other than industry night, which is usually on a Monday night, where you know it's usually waiters, wait staff, whatever people that work in restaurants. But badge night, that's the first I've heard of that in Westchester County. So that's. That's great. Nice. Thank you. Very nice. Wednesday nights. What games are being played? Oh, my God. I'm going to say how you say that word. Um, the one that I have it over to you. You do the wood. J- it's a uh, Jenga. Jing- wait. Jenga. 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 Yes. Oh, when we play. Um, um, oh God. Trouble. Trouble. You're good. Trouble's you fun. remember all that. Mm-hmm. Um, battleship. All the crazy old games. Mm-hmm. And then we played, you know, Operation. Yeah. Operation's hysterical. They're going over there with the little tweezers to put the, you know, the bones in and everything. So really old school um, battleship. And then we do um, uh, Knock Your Block Off. What's Knock Your Block Off? You, you, you oh, ever play like when you were the, little? That's the, you you the, push it in a little um, robot to punch each other? Oh, in the ring. Oh, oh, God. The red and the that's blue. not the name that yes, I know it yes. by. What, it's like Andrew, knock, what's the knock name of it that we know? It is. It's Knock Your Block Off. Yeah, it's Knock Your Block Off. Uh, it's one of my favorites. Little going. punching robots, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. You God know who they are. We they play the that at Lucy's on Mondays. Mm-hmm. Or on Wednesdays during trivia. Ah. Yeah. So we try There's to another keep it name fun. for It's going to drive me crazy. Uh, sock 'em, knock 'em, sock 'em. Yes. yes. Rock 'em, sock 'em robots. It. Rock 'em, sock 'em, yeah. Yes, she's got it. <laughs> Rock 'em's. What did you call it? Knock your block knock off. Knock your block off. <laughs> I don't know. That's is that really the name? That's actually that something that she name? learned in the Bronx. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> knock your you block learned that off. in Yeah, yes, yes, down yeah. there. That's how they called it in the Bronx. They didn't knock its side off. It's block Was off. that like an earlier iteration of it, perhaps? <laughs> well, I have four boys, so yeah. I don't know. We just called it anything. <laughs> <laughs> She's Italian. Leave her alone. <laughs> I'm Italian, too. Aren't we all Italian here? Yes, yeah, some have Italian. Andrew's not. Andrew's not Italian. I wanted to ask um, him about if he knows uh, that New Rochelle guitar player, uh, one of my favorite ones, Johnny Rocket. I haven't seen him perform in a while. He's actually one of my favorites. He does, he's done Lucy's a couple times. Really? You'll see him. You'll see him. I don't know. I don't know. He's good. All right. We have the, um, on Somebody September 6th, I think it's, uh, I forget the name of him, uh, but they do the imitation to the Beatles. Okay. They're coming here September 6th. They're going to play. Where does he Sun set Kings? up for... So, not, not, it's not a band. Is it one person? or No, is it's it? four people. The Sun Kings. I think that's it. Yes. So they're coming they're September excellent. 6th. Mm-hmm. Oh, Where do they set up in we, here? We move where the dark board is in the back. We move the wine barrel out, and okay. they set up back there. But okay. we open up the doors. So usually the doors are never closed. We have them all open, and we have the outdoor seating. So it's really like more enticing, oh, more yeah. open. Um, yeah, so they set up in the back. It's, it's not as big, but everybody keeps teasing me and saying, okay, when you open in the next bar, like, you know. Right. You is have this all your... this reclaimed wood here, which is so cool, like these doors. Yes, so... I give my husband the vision. Mm-hmm. I said, I want something to separate the two stores. I said, you know what? You ever watch Monsters, the movie, and they have all yeah. the doors going? Oh, I said, yeah. I want, That's I want the, I want the doors. Mm-hmm. So he took old-fashioned doors and he sanded them down. And this way you can see both stores in between. Mm-hmm. I didn't want it to be closed up like that. And we were away. And I said, you know what? We need to do something with the lights. And I said to him, this is what I want. He draws it, and that's it. He makes it. Wow. So what are these, old telephone poles? Or yep. So some of the beams are? are from the uh, the train station. Okay. Um, and then we have wood here that they use from Storm Sandy. Some of the beams, that the, the trees come down. So yeah. when the tree comes down, my husband will, you know, take it. They dry it. Um, and then he, they build it. 
Is this your it's first beautiful. restaurant? Yes. Wow. Beautiful. It's, it's it's a little it's a little different. It's a lot different. Yeah. It's a lot different. But it's fun. You know what it is? I love people. Mm -hmm. So being here, like my husband too, we're just people, you know, person, and they come in, we just talk, and it's just, it's really a great rapport and a great, you know, feeling. Yeah. So. Um, You're in a great spot. What a yeah. great location. Thank yeah, was, it, was it the location that happened first or the idea for this restaurant happened no, first? No, the location was the candle store first, mm -hmm. and then we needed okay. more room, so we took the, the carpet place next door, and we had this all lotions and creams and candles, and I didn't have a spot where people would come in and they would ask questions about CBD or candles. So I said, Nick, let's build something where they could feel at home, we can talk about it. We were open and doing a couple of parties. All of a sudden, I guess everybody will know the name when I say the Vasing is they own a roofing company and a few of the other guys came in and they all sit down at the bar and I'm saying, we're not a bar. Oh no, you need to open a bar. This is great. And we just hung out night after night. Mm -hmm. And then I said, you know what? Let me go apply for my liquor license and let's just do this. And it, that was it. And I had no idea what I was doing. So you don't have hard at liquor, though? So you have a beer no. and wine license? Are you in the process of getting a, a full liquor? I don't want that. You don't? No. Nope. It doesn't feel like that kind don't of place. Need it. Yeah, I don't no. really need she's it. She's got cappuccino. She's got coffee. She's oh, got some sort of gourmet. What do you do? So we make the best. What is the best? gourmet ice thing I'm going to tell you is what that it is. A, is that a, a rosé? It's a wine, rose? wine slushy. That's it. We sell out. We're known Frozen. for our wine slushy. Yeah. Mm. It is amazing. Uh, it, it's just great. We have white and rosé. Mm -hmm. It's just amazing. Those are, it's really so popular. So we do really now. well with that. Mm -hmm. We don't have nothing for you to try right now because we close Mondays and Tuesdays. Everything we do right. is fresh. Yeah. So we make it fresh that day of uh, we're opening. That's good because you see some of those places with the frozen drinks and they're just spinning 24-7 mm -hmm. every day yeah. and you don't know if they ever clean those machines out or anything like well, that. Well, here's the thing, and I told John this the other day, I don't make nobody cook for me. I don't eat anywhere because we own a construction company mm -hmm. and we work for very, very big hotels and city restaurants and we used to go in and they would be shut down. Uh, Sarah would dip me all these places because they were dirty and we would have to go back in and, and do patchwork, you know, for rodents and stuff like that. Ooh. And I seen stuff that right. I would never want to eat out. So mm. what happens is, is I'm really anal like that. So John knows, I go back, my kitchen has to be immaculate. Everywhere I go has to be clean. Everything has to be made fresh. Because you, you don't realize it. You're seeing the outside of a restaurant. You don't know what goes on in the back. Right. So you want to make sure that the place that you go to is clean. They have their A rating outside. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's what we do in construction. We do like road and patching and clean up and power washing. So I've seen a lot of that. So that's why it's very important to me mm -hmm. that's that good. everything's clean. Does your husband have like a workshop downstairs yes. or in the basement? Nope. Because we have one across the street, too. It's incredible. So our, our building is across the street by On Dunkin' Donuts. Across. Ah, so we have a big building for nationwide maintenance. Uh, okay. We have a location in the Bronx, which our main um, yard is right, and one up in right. Golden's Bridge and right behind the train station my husband has his workshop right. where he does his wood yeah. now was there any restaurant or bar that you've walked into that kind of gave you some inspiration to everything in here or is this all from your Me. creativity wow any wow. local restaurant that you admire that you usually frequent before you open this place oh where we eat uh, we love Nino's we eat there a lot next door Nino's okay. restaurant I don't know it so, you never ate Nino's? No, oh I'm not God. up in this area that much. Great, I'm White Plains. Great Italian restaurant, small. Mm -hmm. He's been here forever. Everybody knows about it. I never ate there when I moved up here. Five years I was here first. I wouldn't eat there. So, oh my God, it looks so. I went there. We eat there every week. It is amazing. The food's great. I eat at Exit Four. Um, I love Izzy. His place is really, really clean. We eat there. Um, what else? All right. You yeah. know what? I, I don't know if you realize this, Liz, but mm -hmm. I don't think there's been another restaurant we went to where we spoke to the owner or the manager who, when we discussed other restaurants in the area, they're like, oh, this is the best place. Oh, this is my favorite place. That might be the only restaurant the owner time. who will actually give credit where credit is due to another local restaurant. It might be the first time we asked, though. You know, no, you know. <laughs> no, no, no. We've asked, you're, you're it's come up a couple times. You're always asking about the signature dish, which I think might be the meatballs that just came out that look pretty damn awesome over there, and Thank the flatbreads. So but I, I, I don't think I'm, I, this is definitely the first uh, restaurant owner that actually, Aww. Well, because that's, that's she's really an entrepreneur. Nice. She's not just a restaurant owner. She, right. Her, she started with her candles and, you know, recycling wine bottles and, and vodka bottles. I mean, if you go, I have pictures of, of the candles that I'll put online that are amazing. They're beautiful, and it smells like a spa in there. 
Like yeah. I asked her, Thank I said, you. you should open a spa. Like, what's next? I mean, you have so much going on. I don't know how you juggle everything. Well, hopefully in January, you know? we're going to franchise CBD Live Natural. Okay. Wow. And we're going to open up a few That's independent incredible. stores. Mm -hmm. So we can, and, and it's going to be not just a store, it's educational. Mm -hmm. It's going to have the same concept of the bar, mm -hmm. so where you can sit down, talk, and you know, have a drink and understand what you're taking. Um, and but also getting back to Nino's and Exit Four, yeah, I that's how I am. Like, you know, what if you do something good, I'm not going to that says a lot about your it. character, it you know, really there's, does. There's a lot of people also that sell CBD that you know, I don't say don't go there, they, they're, they're terrible. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of different you know lines, and we also have to understand there's enough out there for everybody. And right. you know, yeah. you, right. and I'm only going to talk about what makes me feel good and what's good for my family. So, mm -hmm. hopefully, yeah. they would do the same for me. It's called <laughs> share the love. Yes. Yeah. There's plenty of, of business for everybody out there. Don't be a hater, yep. be a lover. Absolutely. I believe yeah. that. That's true. One hundred percent. We are almost out of time, Liz. Okay. Let's get to your picks, and we'll talk about things happening in the area, places sure. we've all been to recently in Westchester. You know, I mentioned to you during the break that summer's coming to an end, and this week coming up. It's Labor Day weekend. Mm -hmm. so it's over. It's back to school. And you said no, but it really is. The summer is coming to a close. I know September, you still get really great weather, but I almost feel like, oh my gosh, I can't believe it's over already. It went by so fast. Yeah. So coming up Labor Day weekend, um, Morton's is having this incredible special for $99. It's called like Lobster Indulgence Weekends. $99 for two people. You get a choice of an appetizer. Uh, a lobster, a filet mignon, and a dessert. It'll be on my website. And it it's includes like uh, uh, center cup filet mignon, double cup prime rib. I mean, for, for two people between August 29th and, and September 2nd, a three-course meal mm -hmm. at Morton's for Morton's. $99. You wow. can't beat that. It's unbelievable. So I wanted to bring that up. Um, also coming up um, this weekend, Labor Day weekend, they have this um, lobster festival up in Patterson. Um, oh. And there's also this hot air balloon festival right there as well in Patterson, New York. Um, I don't really have all the details, but it'll be on my website, out in westchester.com. Mm. Um, and then, of course, you know, all the local music. Who's Your Daddy's playing? Uh, Maggie Spillane's on Sunday. Um, they start at 6.30. It's like their annual, like, Labor Day party, end of, end of summer sort of bash. Yeah. So if you're around this weekend and you're not going to the beach... Definitely check Who's Your Daddy out. They're a great, fun party band. One of my favorites in Westchester County. I got a couple dates to throw out there, and I rarely do. Um, mm -hmm. September 7th, Jessime Peluso from MTV is going to be at Lucy's Laugh Lounge. Mm -hmm. so that's pretty cool. Yeah. September 14th, uh, Carol Montgomery's uh, Funny Women of a Certain Age Ooh, is I've coming heard. back to Lucy's also. Yeah. And it was just on Showtime yeah, I've heard with of Fran this. Drescher. And it's going to be on Showtime again, I think, next month. So uh -huh. those tickets are going to fly. Uh, also, by the time this comes out, mm -hmm. the website for the White Plains Comedy Club should be up and running. Congratulations. I am involved in it. That's amazing. Um, and right now, what they have scheduled is the first show is Stormy Daniels. Wow. Is going to be there on September 20th. Wow. Uh, it's going to be a, a storytelling, a Q&A. Uh, she's Get not a comedian. Early. She's not a comedian, but it's supposed to be really funny. Is it um, by herself? She's, to my understanding, she's on stage by herself, but there'll be a comedian opener and host okay. to kind of keep the show. Ho, ho, ho host? Don't say that about <laughs> Chrissy Mayer. She's going to be hosting it. Oh, um, no. <laughs> so it's going to be a lot of fun. Well, you know, fun. Stormy Daniels, her career really is. Yes. As an adult film star. Yes, my darling, it is. So. Uh, and I don't. I don't follow politics enough to know if she was with Donald Trump, if she was not, what was the truth, what oh, was the I lie. Oh, I definitely but think she was with him. Mm -hmm. We'll find out on Hello. September 20th. You Hello. can ask any questions. So. <laughs> she definitely was with him. <laughs> so those are the dates I got to throw out there for you guys. That's fantastic. Congratulations yeah. on that. Thank and you. And where is this White Plains Comedy Club going to be? It's in the downstairs of Z Prime Steakhouse. Yes. 189 East Post Road. That is amazing. Um, I mean, there's a lot of work to be done. Uh, there's a right. good team involved. Great. Uh, I'm happy to be part of it with the booking side of it. Good. Uh, we got to see how it goes operationally. There's right. a lot of, a lot of, a lot of moving parts still. Right, of course. So, but Stormy Daniels right now is scheduled to be the first act. And it's a beautiful venue. Beautiful place. When we yeah. were there and we we went downstairs, that was your first thought, and I said, "You got to do it." 
Yeah. Yeah, it's a big venture though. Well, they want they want it to happen there, yeah. so that's that's really. There's what no comedy club in White Plains, so yeah. I think nope. it's perfect. Yeah. I go. Yeah. Yeah. Come mm-hmm. and see Stormy. Yes. You gonna ask oh. your nice questions or mean questions? I don't know about seeing Stormy, but <laughs> I like to go to comedy night. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Everybody yeah. likes to laugh. Yeah. 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 So. Um, any place you've been to the last week or two, guys, that um, maybe you were blown away, a new restaurant, new new place, a, a second experience anywhere? Uh, I was at La Scale in Greenwich. Love that place right on the water. I had dinner there. Okay. Excellent lamb chops. And then we stayed for drinks another night. Um, and then, believe it or not, I tried out uh, uh, um, the smokehouse. Uh, no. The place next in Pleasantville. Oh my gosh, what's it called? I can't think. Southern of it. Table. Yes, Southern Table. That's it's pretty it. good. It was excellent. Yeah. Had ribs there too. They were the biggest ribs. I mean, literally, they were this big. There were two individual ribs. And they also own Wooden Fire wooden in Pleasantville, fire. and now they opened a Wooden Fire in Scarsdale, Eastchester. Eastchester. I right think. on the border near Social 808. Yeah, it's yeah. not. It's not in Scarsdale Village, but. No. Um, yeah, I never tried that place. Remember, we discussed going there, and yeah. I said I'd never been there. So, I'm trying to get out and get some new, some, some new places, a lot and of meet places some new people. Out in Westchester. Well, and it's, of course, go to outinwestchester.com to check out all the other events and stuff yeah, coming up. Of course, of course. Um, I got nothing else. You guys have anything else? No, I think I'm good. Yeah. Oh, you know what? Next week, I want to talk about how Playland is just falling apart. Oh, Are they? Oh, yeah. I went uh, a week and a half ago. I was thinking you about did? going with my yeah. grandson. I yeah. thought that we did everything there, no? No. Yeah, I went and played mini golf there, and it was pretty, uh, pretty lame. Yeah. It was horrible. We get somebody from the area, maybe that can comment on it too. I believe on shame. Friday, uh, Friday night coming up, uh, they have Jessica Lynn though playing uh, at Playland Park there. At in the, the park center, itself. At the park itself. Yeah. Nice. I saw that. It's on. It's on my website. It's online. I mean, I find it hard to believe that they're able to pay somebody like her, but she's good. She's she draws a good crowd. So that's uh, Friday night of Labor Day weekend. That would be the 31st, I believe. So, All right, the 30th. Guys. The 30th. Uh, again, uh, we got to thank Marcy. Bedford Hills Wine and Beer Bar, mm-hmm. Marcy, and of course Scott Morgan, all for being part of the show this week. Uh, and don't forget to check us out out in Westchester on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and of course the website outinwestchester.com. Thank you very much, all for tuning in. Thank you so much, Marcy. Thank you.